Welcome to the Healthier Together podcast by Body and Brain Yoga Tai Chi. How have you been? Very good. How about you? Very good. Time flies. Yeah, very fast. Very fast. The weather is very nice now in Arizona. This is the time when everybody likes to come here. Yes, people want to come in Phoenix, especially. In Phoenix. In November. In November. Beautiful. And December. Yes, so it gets beautiful. busy. And we are back with the podcast. We've had a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Some travels, some exciting events, yeah. and many more coming up uh, mm -hmm. next year. Yeah. But we wanted to talk about something very important as we close in on the end of the year and ah. get ready for the new year. Already? A lot of people wow. at the beginning of the year, what do they do? Resolution. Resolution. New Year's resolution. What are resolutions for? They're, they're for achieving something, right? They have a dream. Having a dream. They have a destination. They have a goal. Having a goal. And it's nice. The, the beginning of a new year, you right. feel fresh. Yes. You get inspired. Yeah. And you set your goal. I want to gain weight. Oh, not me, but many people want to get away. Um, oh, not you? Not, not me. Not oh, okay, yes. well, <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, the new year is a perfect time. But what is the typical response after setting that resolution? What do most people experience? Yeah, they, they got frustrated about themselves and, you know, they don't, they lack the momentum and that they just... Runs don't. out. Yeah. Yeah, it, we know. It's, it's tough. You set the momentum, you get that inspiration, but then a couple of days, a couple of weeks, it's hard to keep it going most of the time. So today, we want to talk a little bit about why people don't achieve their dreams. Oh, why people don't achieve their dreams. That's right. Ah, why people don't achieve their dreams. It's also good uh, to talk about why people do achieve their dreams. Uh, That's very important. Learn uh, from those who have. But I think it can be very helpful to see why we why not? don't. Right. Yeah. That's right. And then we can learn how to achieve our dreams. That's right. I see. From a brain and energy perspective. Brain why, and energy perspective. And brain and energy. Why mm. people don't achieve their dreams mm. from a brain perspective, energy perspective. Mm. Actually, our habit mm -hmm. is very strong, yep. as we know. So in Korea, we say like 작심 삼일. That means that, yeah, that means that even if you make up your mind, mm. It is very hard to keep the resolution more than three days. More than three days? Yes. Actually, that's, that's been my experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those first three days are right. really, really energized. Yeah. And then after that, things change and yeah. they always change. In my case, the first three hours... The first three hours, yeah, wow. Very strong. Well, you're very advanced. You, quickly, you move through those stages. I don't know, so advanced or... Anyway, yeah. that's how... It, it goes. I remember when I first started taking body and brain yoga trainings, mm -hmm. the, the process would last about three weeks. <laughs> three weeks. So I'd go to a retreat, <laughs> and then the three weeks afterwards, I'd be on some kind of high. Ah. And then I'd be a little bit down. And then plateau. And, well, plateau actually would have been nice. It was, oh. it was more like a depression. Oh, my God. And then coming back eventually to a plateau. But the whole process could have taken a couple months. Mm. And then after a while, I... I think, frankly, I stopped resisting it, and I just mm. said, okay, I'm high, but usually I go down, and mm. I just let it happen, and it would happen quicker. Oh. So I stopped resisting entirely, and then a couple days, about three days. Right. <laughs> and I think maybe after I practice as long as you have, three hours. <laughs> no, 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 no. It should be like at least three years. Three years. 30 years, something like Keeping that. Keeping it, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. So anyway, today, mm -hmm. why people don't achieve their dreams. Yeah. So that means that something gets in the way of the dreams? Something gets in the way of the dreams. I want to ask you, what are the typical things that, for you, that you've seen with other people, get in the way? What are the typical things that get in the mm. way of dreams? We all know some of them. Mm. Um, like fear? Yeah. I'm afraid? We know, right? Yeah. I have a dream, but I also have fear right. about the exact same thing. I always think of public speaking. Mm. A lot of people have the dream of being mm -hmm. able to speak well, uh -huh. present well, but they also have a very strong Lots fear. Of fear. It's very common. Yeah. So, yeah, we have the fears. Mm -hmm. um, we also have, a lot of people talk about distractions. Distractions, right. I have a dream, but I also have responsibilities. Right. I have a job, or I have a family, or right. I have a medical condition or something, mm -hmm. and I need to take care of that. Yeah. Especially as you have more responsibility. Yeah. Right, then it is very hard to focus one focus on one dream, mm -hmm. and actually it is very easy to use that excuse. Yeah, and, and we can say in the long run, I think after a lifetime looking back, 
I've heard this said that many people, as they end their lives, they look back and they say, "I wish I hadn't spent so much time worrying about something, something, my job, my uh-huh. bills." You know, I wish I had done a little bit more for my dream. Right. But yeah. it's not easy. It's not easy. It's yeah. true. Especially as you get older, mm-hmm. spe- as you get more responsibilities, then it is very hard to find their own dream because we have uh, more, uh, more and more little time. Yeah. For themselves. And then a lot of people think that retirement is going to be the time Ah, to focus on your dreams again. Right. I would say if you don't make a habit out of making time and energy for your dreams, then when you get to retirement, it's not necessarily going to be easier to focus on your dreams then than it was when you have, you know, a job and kids, whatever. Yeah. And then also people say that too. You have something you want to do Mm. and you have a goal. Then there is something that you really want to do right now. Mm. Then why do you wait? Why yeah. do you want to wait until you get retired? Mm. You may have some time, but you might not have the energy that you had when you were younger. That's right. So we could almost say that life uh-huh. gets in the way oh. of our dreams. And to put this more practically, Do people lack the knowledge? Do they not understand what to do most Mm, of the time? They know. I think they do. I I think most of us know. In fact, in all the years that I've given classes and lectures, Mm. and I'm sure you as well, Mm -hmm. most people already know a lot of the principles and advice Mm. that we want to share about achieving the dreams. We already know. Actually, some of the audience that know more than I did. Actually, that's really yeah, true. Right. Of course, especially when we start younger than a lot of the, the practitioners, uh-huh. people know a lot. Oh, Actually, yeah. me too. In my life, I've known what I wanted to do, maybe yeah. to be successful in athletics, right. to be a better student, mm-hmm. to, to get in a better job or whatever. Intellectually. We know, right. but what's the problem? What is the problem? Knowing is not actually very powerful. Ah, then what is powerful? That is the secret. Ah, That's the question. Ah, I see. So, w- for us to achieve our dream, mm. knowing is not enough. Exactly. Knowing is not enough. There's ah. some gap. There's some gap between knowing it and being able not just to do it, but to manifest, ah. to create, and ah. to make results. So, to do it or to be it. To do it and to be it. Ah, I see. There is a gap. Mm-hmm. And... And we shouldn't feel bad. We shouldn't ignore that gap. We should mm. really look at it closely to see what is the gap and how can we close the gap. Ah. And that's where we come to a brain-based perspective and an energy perspective on right. achieving dreams or why we right. don't. So we will look into this from the perspective of brain and energy. Exactly. Right. And there is a gap between knowing and then doing it and the, the, the being. That's right. Ah. That's right. So... Uh, I want to give a little principle first Mm -hmm. about the brain Mm -hmm. before we get into something else Mm -hmm. about the brain. And there's this principle that we often talk about called the three layers of the brain. Three layers of the brain, that's right. Yeah, and and this is kind of, this is, you know, based in science, but it's a little bit general. It's not getting too specific. Yes. What are the three layers of the brain? Mm -hmm. What is the first one? The first one is, maybe we'll have a little graphic here, something nice. The the first layer is the... Do you want to open my brain uh, no, 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 Did that's okay. Practice, sorry. <laughs> no, we need you to continue to talk. <laughs> so the outer layer of the brain, the big frontal mm. cortex, what's called the... Neocortex. Neocortex. Ah. What does neo mean? New? New. New. <laughs> so evolutionarily, this frontal cortex, this outer layer of the brain is evolutionarily, we say, very new. Ah, uh, this is the newest The newest part. Layer. And, and uh. we say human beings, and there may be a few animals, dolphins, maybe elephants uh. also have some kind of... But human beings pretty much exclusively have mm, a big right. neocortex. So this is what makes a human as a human. Basically, yeah. Uh. That's what the... Like the human brain is the uh. neocortex, that segment. And... What sets humans apart from other, especially mammals? That's a very good question. What is the brain Mm -hmm. doing differently? Thinking? A lot of thinking. Right. Primarily, the difference is in thinking. Right. It's calculation. Ah. It's awareness. It's some of the creativity. Right. So thinking activity is what made people advance. Very advanced 
technologically, right. language, yeah. culture, all those kind of things. Very human, mm -hmm. located in the neocortex. But at the same time, isn't it where all the suffering came, come, came from? Many people might say that. Oh, yeah. That a lot of our, our advances, but also maybe a lot of our problems come from... Lots of thinking, lots thinking, of thinking over, over, and over again. And more to the point of why we don't achieve our dreams, our thinking brain can get there quickly. How do I achieve my dream? It's going to be like this, this, and this. I've got a plan. Yeah. I can thought, see thought, it. Thought. But... I have thought it through. I have thought it through, <laughs> but in reality... That's a very, very thin layer. We say uh, just a little bit of energy there. Ah, uh, only a little energy. A little bit of energy uh, there. Okay. We, have, we have a second layer of the brain. Oh, which is? A deeper layer, which is called the limbic system. Limbic system. And the limbic system encompasses a few different structures, uh, but it's basically the middle layer of the mm, brain. And it is also called the emotion brain? The emotion brain it processes a lot of feelings. Uh, Uh, desires, reactions, some mm. of the fight or flight response. Right. And most mammals have a highly developed limbic system. So ah. it's called the mammalian brain. Ah. And we have it too. Right. And now the interesting thing is many researchers say our limbic system mm -hmm. is influencing our behavior a lot more than we might think. Ah, right. When I, th when I you know, think about this, mm -hmm. my thoughts and feeling, yeah. right? Even if I had like, I, even if, even when I want to try to become rational, right. when I have anger, mm. when I got upset. Some emotion. Right. Then it is really dominating. It's, it's easy to miss the fact that our emotions can really drive us in a direction no matter what we try to think about. Right. So this limbic system layer is, is powerful, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit deeper, and it's somewhat unconscious. Ah, and also when I go to shopping, mm. and I know that, mm -hmm. oh, I don't need this. I don't need yeah. this. Or and I didn't, I didn't the, plan on buying this. That food this. is not healthy. Right. I know that. I know well, that intellectually, but what does my limbic system say? I don't know, but my hands are already there. <laughs> Your hands are already there. Yeah, I don't know what my limbic system says, but my hands are there. So that's the power Of the limbic, so it, that's a, a, a funny but very true so example. So that is very powerful. So that's the limbic system. So we say that's the middle layer of the brain. Wow. Do you know what reminds me? Yeah. What? The movie Inception. Inception. Yeah. Have you watched that? I have a couple times. Wow. Very so interesting. It goes deeper, deeper, and deeper. Where's the motivation? What mm -hmm. happens on the first layer comes from the motivation right. on the deeper layer. Yeah. yeah. And I remember that when the when the car curves. Mm. And then the whole building, I mean, that's, that's not the point. But <laughs> as you go deeper... If you haven't seen it, check out Inception. Right. As you go deeper, the bigger power it has. The bigger power. Ah. And so the limbic system is actually not the deepest layer. There's a deeper layer, which is the... Brainstem? Brainstem. Wow. Now, the brainstem is evolutionarily what we might call the oldest. Oldest. The, the deepest It's ah. called the reptilian brain because evolutionarily it's said to be the earliest reptilian. to develop. Ah. Now, energetically, what we say is that the most powerful energy mm. for our life is located in the brainstem. Ah. Now, scientifically, the brainstem is taking care of what kind of things? Our life. Our basic life functions. Like breathing. Breathing. How about our heart? The heartbeat, it beats all day, it beats all <laughs> night. You don't have to think about it. Right. Thank God something's taking care of that. <laughs> How about digestion? Digestion. There's a lot of unconscious muscle movement and organ activity that we don't have to think about. Oh my God, what would happen if we have to think about breathing and it's, it's, digestion? It's crazy. It's impossible. There's no way we could survive if we had to consciously control it. So luckily we don't. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I have forgotten to breathe for... <laughs> Three minutes. Don't apologize to me. You're oh, the one who's going to have a problem. <laughs> so what, an interesting thing about the brainstem is there's one thing that we can do consciously that actually does directly influence our brainstem. Oh, what's that? Breathing. Breathing. Of all those things that the brainstem is directly related to, it's breathing that we can decide to consciously control. Ah, right. So... Blood pressure, we can not Not, not easily, really. Yeah. Heartbeat a little bit, but Heartbeat. basically not. not. Really, yeah. Yeah. How about the body temperature? You can do something to change it, but right. just by focusing, no. Yeah. Uh, how about circulation? 
circulation difficult. Ah, about, these, these are very advanced techniques if you yeah. can do. How about them. digestion? Yeah, everything is very difficult. Everything about difficult. breathing. But breathing, anybody ah. can use breathing to influence ah. the condition of their brain and, frankly, their brainstem. Mm. Now, these days, we have these three layers of the brain. Which layer of the brain gets stimulated the most? Ah. Is it our thinking brain, emotional brain, or deeper layer brainstem? Hmm. May, might be hard to say, but where, what is our stimulation level these days? Lots of limbic system? There is a lot of limbic system, uh -huh. definitely. Uh -huh. But how about for the neocortex? Yeah, we, yeah, the society forces us to think a lot. Isn't it constant? Right. Now, I might have said this All before. You might have heard this before, uh -huh. and I might have said it on the podcast before. I heard something that I think is really amazing. They say, if you sit down and read the New York Times... On New Sunday. Oh, right. You, you read the newspaper. Right, I mentioned right, before right. Yes. that you probably will read more words uh -huh. in that one sitting than somebody 200 years ago would read in their entire life. Mm -hmm. Right. I really think it's true. You, you know, you can calculate. But that much stimulation uh -huh. is different in our day-to-day -day life now versus generations ago. Yeah. Have you watched the Back to the Future? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then they, at that time, when the movie was created, it was very... Um, revolutionary when they thought about all the things that they, they saw, they, they showed, mm. like a time machine and also the flying... The hoverboard? Yeah, hoverboard yeah, and yeah. everything. And the and shoes then, that automatically like, right, tightened. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you remember and that then, one? Lots of things were came in true, uh -huh. except, except lots of except other things, mm. but people developed more about the information. Right. How about the internet? More than we expected. Yeah, more than expected. It's really interesting. Yeah, so that means that our brain has a craving for mm. more information. Right. And actually, you are right. This society has stimulated a lot about our intellectual knowledge. Right. And that stimulation activates the neocortex. Right. Constantly. We know constantly. at night we still have light. Ah. We can read. We can watch TV. Mm. Our neocortex is, frankly, a lot of the time it can be overactive. Right. Overactivity. And when the neocortex is overactive, what happens? Insomnia. Insomnia. What happens to the limbic system? Oh. What happens to the brainstem? Ah, I see, I see. So those, those layers, those processes that the brainstem is supposed to be taken care of can be mm. depressed. Right. The limbic system can also be depressed mm -hmm. if the neocortex never stops firing. Mm. This, this is uh, it's the brain research. There's a lot of research on this, but this is also energy. So does that, mean that, uh, does that mean that the, by, the, by having thinking too much on the neocortex, the brainstem and the limbic system does not get enough energy? Some people really say that that's what happens, ah. that your immune system, that your, your circulation, ah. digestion, everything can be depressed if you have overthinking. Right. So I saw many people... Uh, who think that or who do that that when they have lots of thinking mm. they want to think their thoughts through they, to they, overcome their thinking. They want to think their thoughts through they want to respond to every thought. Yeah. Now getting back to why people don't achieve their dreams mm -hmm. overactive thinking depresses these deeper layers. These deeper layers have a lot of power ah. and not just power to make our digestion good we say they actually have power to help us manifest our dreams. Oh, then, you know, you, you, did you say that we have more power in, uh, inside? How much more power? How much more power? Interesting question, right? Yeah. Right. So I read this book. You probably read it too. It's called Zero Limits. Zero Limits? Yep. Ho'oponopono? About Ho'oponopono. Oh, yeah. So Zero Limits was really interesting. Ho'oponopono is a Hawa uh, like traditional Hawaiian right. healing technique, uh -huh, right? Yeah. And in the book, this is just a very small section of the book, but I found it really compelling. Uh -huh. There's a traditional Hawaiian healer. Right. And he says something about how much of our mind and energy is conscious and how much mm. of it is unconscious. I remember that part. Do you remember that yeah, part? Yeah, yeah. Now, what do most people say about how much of our brain we use? 5%? They say like, you know, 5%. Right. Sometimes people say 10%. Uh -huh. Some people say, oh no, it's only 1%. Right. But you know what this Hawaiian healer who had done healing for many years, you know what he said? He said, consciously, we only really have access to 0.0001%. 0 0.0001% 0 0 0 0 0 
of our total mind wow. and energy. That only that 0.0001% is conscious. That is about the neocortex energy. The conscious, the thinking, and maybe mm-hmm. a little bit of the emotion we're conscious of. He said 99.9999% uh-huh. of our mind and energy is subconscious or unconscious. Oh, like almost all. Almost all. So you think about how hard we work to fix ah. problems, to create things with our conscious mind. Right. So uh, I, would, I, would, uh, I would have said mm. it is like the tip of the iceberg, yeah. but it is much more than that. It's actually much more than that. They ah. say the iceberg is like 5%, five, five right. above. Like that. It's, it's so much less is actually available. But yes, it's still a lot. We still mm. are conscious, but that much more power is oh. under the surface. So that means that we have a lot of energy and a lot of possibility inside. That's right. But we are using only a small, tiny bit of the information. That's right. And that's why some people seem to manifest great things without a lot of effort. Ah. Now, frankly, how I would explain that, they're not trying too hard over using that 0.001%. Ah, I see. They're tapping into, through different methods, the subconscious power. Ah. But... One of my teachers told me this one time, and I think it's really true. Mm -hmm. Even though we know that all that power is subconscious, Mm -hmm. we have to do our best consciously with what we have. Right. We have to try in order to activate that deeper layer. Mm. So instead of thinking, we should do it. Not just thinking. We got to do it, even Uh, though at first it feels like that power is not coming. Yeah, and then it feels weird. Yeah, right. 